my name is Jana Wolf, Director of Nutrition at GBMC's Comprehensive Obesity Management Program. And my name is Michael Salomon, and this, this is, is The Sleeve Chef. Chef. And we have an amazing guest today, Jennifer. She's going to be um, joining us and telling us a little bit about her non-scale victory. Mm -hmm. So, take it away. So, my name is Jennifer Gensel. I was sleeved by Dr. Friesen on December 18th, so about four months ago. Um, I've lost a total of 85 pounds. Amazing. <laughs> Thank you. And my biggest non-scale victory is being able to run around and play with my kids. Um, and I think it really hit home when I was able to sit my four-year-old on my lap, put my arms around her and read her a book and be comfortable and just snuggle her. That was the biggest. That amazing, so amazing. Love and it. she was telling us this before <laughs> the, actual the actual show and I think that we were all crying. It, so. gave, it gave us time to dry our tears. <laughs> well, thank we you so here. much, Jennifer. We're thank gonna you. call you back up in a Great. little bit. AR2 for having us and uh, the GBMC marketing team and you for joining us. So tell us your questions, interact, let us know what you're thinking tonight. We're going to be making something super fresh, super nice and nutritious for the upcoming spring season, right? Absolutely. What are we doing tonight? So we are actually going to do two things, guys. Uh, one, we're going to make this really light, delicious smoothie uh, with some of our ingredients that we're going to use. Then we're going to also show you how to make a salad from those ingredients as well. It's going to be this beautiful composed salad. It's going to have some green goddess vinaigrette. Mm. Uh, we're going to do that with some uh, fresh strawberry, fresh pineapple, some sauteed chicken, and some uh, goat cheese as well. It's going to be beautiful, light, refreshing, delicious. Yeah, and we kind of picked these two things to make because we realize everyone's short on time. You know, you want to get to the grocery store, pick up all your stuff, and be able to make a couple of things with those items and not let them go bad in the Absolute, refrigerator. Absolutely, yeah. You know, I think that's one of the number one things that people say about buying produce is that it just goes bad right away. Right. So now we're going to show you two ways to make things with, you know, one sweet, one savory, right? right? Absolutely. And they both have similar nutritional content. So it'll be actually kind of nice to have something maybe even for breakfast and then lunch. Exactly. Yeah. So let's um, let's take it away. Yeah, let's do it. So we're going to start off with our smoothie, guys. Uh, I'm going to show you, for all of you who have been really curious, this is our friendly pineapple. Pineapples are delicious. Pineapples can be a little tricky to break down. Oh, yeah. So we are going to show you how to break a pineapple down. First, uh, for your pineapple test, people say, knock on the bottom. You want to hear that. I like the smell as well. If it's got that fresh, beautiful pineapple smell, mm -hmm. that'll let you know sort of the more aromatic it is, the more ripe it is as well. So we're going to take our knife and come straight down, cut off our top. You can save our top for a little hospitality. Oh, yeah. It'll be, be nice and pretty. And thank you, Xanda, for joining us. And if you have any questions, guys, let us know, even if it doesn't have to do with the actual recipe itself. Um, both of us are trained in nutrition and culinary, so we have all the answers, or Absolutely. at least we'll try. So what we did, guys, is we went ahead and just, we first of all started by cutting out the root and the top. That way we have a flat surface on which to work. Mm -hmm. And now we went ahead and cut right down the middle to where that core is here. So I'm gonna go ahead and then lay my four slices on the sides. I get you can see where that core is. There's two ways to do this. One, you can just have it sitting up here again, a flat surface, and just very carefully let your knife do the work and go straight down and cut out that core, that hard core. Mm -hmm. Easy, hard yep. core. Exactly. And then, yep, I actually forgot something. Sorry. Again, do this. So we're cutting okay. out all the cores first. Yep. And I got to tell you, just from standing here, it smells so good. Mm -hmm. You know, you can definitely use frozen fruit because frozen fruit doesn't usually have any sugar added to it. And it's typically frozen right on the farm. But this smells so good. Mm -hmm. All right, guys, we're going to do that first. And then what we'll come in here and do next is we'll go through and we'll actually clean up our pineapple edges here as well. So we'll come down. Okay, so you're just slicing on just yeah. horizontally. Exactly. Okay. Yep. I'm just going to remove that edge here and try to get as much as possible. Normally, you actually want to do this ahead of time and do this before you remove the core. So you want to remove the skin before the core? Yes, exactly. Okay. But because I was feeling fancy, we'll do it this way. Okay. 
And anyone that's just joining us, we are starting off um, with cutting up the pineapple. We're going to be making um, a salad and a smoothie, um, perfect for the warm weather coming up. Mm -hmm. So, and these are actually a lot of people ask me about um, pre and post workout foods. This is going to be perfect because it'll have both protein and carbohydrates. Mm -hmm. So a nice mix of those, which you need when you go work out. Absolutely. All right. Okay. And go. you know, when you're having something like a salad versus a smoothie, you're talking about solid foods versus liquid foods. So solid foods will traditionally fill you up for longer. I have seen numerous people on the Facebook site and just in general talking about how they're hungry all the time after surgery, which really means that they're hungry a little bit more often um, than they were maybe when they first got the surgery. But using solid foods versus liquid foods might fill you up a little bit more. Not to say that a smoothie isn't a great option for when you're on the run mm -hmm. or when you're just not hungry um, and you know you need your protein in, it's a perfect option. So the thing um, here, that's yeah. a great point, Jana. So the thing here too, guys, is when we're cutting this up, we wanna make sure that we're focusing on bite-sized pieces for both our salad and for our smoothie. Very good, it'll yes. help it break down a bit easier. Yeah, and it's, e it's easier to eat in a, in a salad. Absolutely. Has anyone out there ever eaten fruit on their salad? Love, love, love. Yeah, it gives it a nice juiciness. Absolutely, you yeah. Know? That, and you don't need as much dressing usually if you have some in there. Absolutely. So the key is remove any of those little brown specks. They're mm -hmm. basically inedible. They will not be good. They're really tough. There we go. That's for our salad. We can use this for our smoothie. Mm. All right. And yum, I could yum, do yum. A, I could do a little taste yeah, test please, to let the right audience ahead. know how fresh this is. Mm. I know. I love, love fresh pineapple. And it's perfect. At one point, too, Jana was saying about the fresh frozen. Mm -hmm. I'd also caution you, uh, if you want to go, like, oh, I'll just buy canned pineapple. There's so much hidden sugar mm -hmm. that they use to actually preserve that canned pineapple right. that it ends up being just overly sweet and it gives a, it, it's, it's just not, it's just not good and it's just It not doesn't have the fresh taste. Yeah, and it's, so it's sort of a false healthy as well. Yes, so even if it's in its own juices, right. it might actually be a little bit higher in sugar anyway. Absolutely. So yeah, I mean, I would definitely either get the fresh or the frozen. Absolutely, you know, absolutely. All right, so smoothie time, so let's do it. And again, guys, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. We love your questions. If you have questions about breaking your food down, if you have questions about, oh, what do I eat, da 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 da. We've got you covered. Let us know. All right, so let's do it. So okay, we're so we're doing the, the smoothie first. Yes, let's okay. do the smoothie first. All right, let's great. Let's make it happen. Go ahead. Um, I am, uh, okay, so I love making smoothies because they're easy um, and they're quick and on the go. So I brought in a couple of different protein powders and I've gotten questions about what's the difference between a meal replacement protein powder and just a regular old protein powder. Um, I brought in a couple of my favorites of the, like the bariatric friendly, um, powders and one of them is bariatric advantage and this is a high protein meal replacement what it is is it's just slightly higher in calories and fat potentially lower in protein but not this one mm -hmm. this one is very oh, high in protein yeah. yeah so um what it is is it's basically like more of a meal versus just a scoop of protein powder so the difference in calories is 150 on this sure. versus just 100 or 110 on this okay so okay really so it's not really yeah. that yeah. much yeah um but you'll get like a little bit more fat on this, so two grams, which makes it a little bit more filling, mm -hmm. actually. Awesome. So de it depends on what you want. All right. I do have um, discount codes for uh -oh. both of these, All so right. I do want to actually tell you guys, um, you know, especially being GBMC comp members, um, the code for the Bariatric Advantage for a discount is just GBMC uppercase. So if you go onto the website of Bariatric Advantage, you can actually get a discount. Um, so bariatricadvantage.com. GBMC so in is the code. So you want to splurge after those yeah. refunds you get everybody, you know where you're going. Oh yeah. <laughs> so um, so we're yeah, going to use, so we're gonna use this and um, I'm actually going to be doing a little bit of the preparation yeah, today. Yeah, right. Let's do it. Um, we put, I put in the fruit first. Okay. So we're going to be doing like a half cup of the, um, or a fourth cup of the, what's that? Pineapple. Pineapple, yep. A little bit of the strawberries. Yum, yum. So I do a fourth cup, a fourth cup, or a half cup, fourth cup. It depends on how much you want. And like if you had, an, if you had a workout that day, it's good also. Mm. Um, I'm putting spinach in there. A lot of people cringe and they make a weird face when I say put spinach in your um, smoothies. But guess what? 
it's pretty much a hidden taste once you get it in there, and it doesn't taste like much. If you don't like the color green, mm -hmm. that it might turn your smoothie, put it into a cup that is non-translucent. There you go. Okay. And then um, we're going to put in, where's the water? Okay. You can either use water, unsweetened almond milk, unsweetened soy milk, 1% fat-free milk, mm -hmm. or any of the nut milks like um, cashew milk. Usually those are minimal calories. Great. You know how I always say that nuts and stuff are like really high yeah. in calories yeah. and fat? Um, the milks aren't. Oh, good to know. Okay. And my secret, my secret thing that I Let's do at it. home. Let's see it. Just a dash of cinnamon. Just a dash of cinnamon. And um, the cinnamon's good. It gives it just like a little bit of like, you know, excitement. And, um, <laughs> and I put a little bit of ice, but if you use frozen um, fruit, then you might not need ice. Ah, smart. Okay. Push it down. And the night before, you can put all of this in a baggie. Without, without the ice and water and stuff, you can put all of the fruit and stuff in a baggie in the freezer and just throw it in in the That's morning. Great. So I have to bang it a little bit. Look at that. It's easy. I do it for a long time because you can see that there's little specks of the spinach. In there. And keep in mind too, guys, we are using baby spinach for this recipe as yes. well. If you use, if you use a, a regular traditional spinach, remove those stems because they're going to be bitter in, in the recipe. And, and actually, you make a great point because a lot of people use kale too. Yep. So kale can be very yeah. intense if you don't remove the stems. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Okay. We so weren't as worried for our baby spinach because it's a younger, uh, it's not going to have this bitter of a quality for those stems. Right. Now, I'm going to just pour a little bit of this and we can kind of awesome. sip on it while yeah, we do good. this. Let's do it. All right. All right, guys. That is, looks delicious. Look at that color. I love it. It's fun. I mean, some people will get turned off by it and that's okay. But again, you don't oh, need to use it drinks. in. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> we got to make things fancy and fun around we here, do. right? We do. Let's give these a try. Okay. mild. Mm, yum, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. If you want it a little bit sweeter, um, you can always put like stevia or Splenda in it. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I'm going to give a little bit to Jennifer as well. All right, guys. So on to our salad. So we've got our pineapple prepped. We are going to make our, uh, it's going to be a sauteed chicken breast. We're going to serve that over some baby spinach uh, with a little green goddess vinaigrette. Uh, and then we're going to serve that with some pineapple, some fresh strawberries, some fresh carrot, uh, and it's going to be light, delicious, and healthy. So we're going to start off by making our vinaigrette. I just want to thank a couple of people for joining us. Lee, Tova, Steven, Tanya, Michael, Tina, Nancy, Mary, Kia. And um, how much water did we put in? I put in anywhere from 8 to 12 ounces, but um, sometimes you might need a little bit more or less depending on how thick you want it. Um, and like actually tasting this, I would have actually done another round with more ice mm. in it to make because I enjoy more icy sure. okay. drinks. Excellent. Yeah. All right. And so we're going to add our we're going to add our uh, apple cider vinegar first to our uh, bowl. And then I like the apple cider vinegar for this. It's going to add a little bit of sweetness, a little bit of sour mm. to it as well. We're going to add a little Dijon mustard next. There's nothing better than Dijon mustard in a dressing. Absolutely. So Dijon is great. Adds a nice little, it's actually, actually is a binder. It's one more layer of flavor to this dish. And then, so you see here, guys, what we're doing is we're basically making, we're starting off by making our base, right? So we're making a very basic vinaigrette. A vinaigrette, very basic vinaigrette, is going to be extra virgin olive oil and vinegar. One part vinegar to three parts olive oil. So if you use one cup of vinegar, you'll use three cups of olive oil for your dish. And I once heard that um, using the vinegar and putting in like the garlic and things like that while you have the vinegar in first extracts a little bit more of the flavor. Is that true? Uh, you know, I honestly don't know. It's a great question. Yeah, it's, it's just something that I heard. Ah, let me show you guys one trick, right? So in case your bowl is getting all out of control, take a towel, lay your towel down, 
this will stop your bowl from moving around as much. Very good. I like little tricks. Okay, and we just got a question about fresh, fresh versus frozen fruit. And um, we were actually talking about it a little bit earlier before that it's pretty similar in terms of nutrition content. Um, the frozen has just been frozen on the farm usually. You just want to make sure that there is no added sugar in the ingredients list. Usually it'll say if it's just frozen strawberries, ingredients, strawberries, and that'll be it. Right. Yeah. Yeah, really look out for those hidden sugars. Oh, yeah, right. and I mean, I, I've had a lot of people ask me, you know, I, I, I'm afraid to have the fruit because it blows out my carb count. And that's like the number one thing that I hear about fruit. However, fruit is one of the best, healthiest carbs that you can have, and it has never made you gain weight, ever. So, just consider that, okay? Um, other things that you might be consuming could be adding even more carbs. So also consider that as well. All right, guys, so here's what we're really looking for for our vinaigrette starter here. It's just this beautiful, see how that's slowly emulsified together? So we've got our mustard in there, we've got our apple cider vinegar in there, and then we also have our uh, extra virgin olive oil in here as well. Now we're gonna add just a little bit of minced garlic to it. Again, you don't need a lot, just a little bit goes a long way, especially when it's fresh like this. And it really makes a difference making your own dressing. Oh, absolutely. Wouldn't you agree? Absolutely. It tastes fresher. It doesn't have um, that chemically taste that you sometimes get from yep. a pre-made dressing. Absolutely. And it only takes like a minute, as Ab you just saw. I agree. I agree. All right, so let me go ahead and grab my herbs next. We've got some fresh parsley here. So I'm just going to show you a little trick. What I like to do is I like to take a little bit. because We don't need much. Just tear off the top. Don't need a lot of fresh parsley here. And would you say fresh versus dried is better for the oh, dressing? Ab absolutely. Yeah. Yep, for this application, absolutely. So again, just a nice little chiffonade here. Go through. Again, when you're working with these herbs, you just want to slice them. So traditionally, green goddess dressing, you may have heard of it before, is actually has a mayo base. A mayo base mm. or a sour cream base. Okay. So that's where a lot of that richness comes from. I like this vinaigrette recipe because it's actually going to be much lighter and still have that same green goddess flavor and color to it. Yeah, and especially since we're making this for the summer, you know, it, it, we want something kind of light. Absolutely. And if you did want to do, you know, a light mayo in there or um, a Greek uh, a Greek yogurt, like you yogurt know, fat-free Greek yep. yogurt is fine as well. Yep. Get our fresh chives here too. A couple of those. Okay, and I just want to mention that, um, you know, like we said, we're, we're kind of divvying up our grocery list. We're getting all the main stuff for the smoothie and the salad. And it's a similar, it's similar in terms of nutritional content, except for the salad does have a bit more fat and calories, mm -hmm. which will keep you fuller longer. So, I mean, you can certainly do this for both breakfast, the smoothie, and then lunch. Yep. So super simple, super easy. All right, so those were some fresh chives. Then we're gonna have a little fresh tarragon here next. And again, let's grab these guys and just do a quick little rip. Again, we don't need a lot. Just need a little bit. Very nice. There we go. And these fresh herbs do add nutritional content as well. Absolutely. So you're getting vitamins and minerals from these too. And the key here is to really mince these up good. You really wanna get them nice and small. You don't want them to be too large, very large, chunk, very large uh, chunks in your uh, vinaigrette. Yeah, and we were getting questions about um, the recipes. They will be published after the show. There we go. And all, and if you are missing this show or you want to see other shows, you can find all of our past shows on the GBMC Facebook website. Yep. All right. And so then all of the recipes are there as well. So this is what we're looking for, guys. We are looking for this really nice, see how I really took my time here. We want this really nice, really finely chopped. We'll go right into our bowl. Beautiful. And again, this is going to be herbaceous, so you want it. You want to make sure you got plenty of fresh herbs in here. And I wonder if you're in a really big rush, if you could just literally take the the ninja or the magic bullet and throw your stuff in for the dressing. Yeah, absolutely. We okay, we have a question mm. from Jennifer. 
dressing, would you let it sit for a couple of hours or do you serve it immediately with the dressing? You can, you can do both, honestly. You know, if you want to make it ahead of time and, and let it sit for a bit, you're more than welcome to. I'd say, you know, if you want to do a few hours in advance, go for it. Uh, I, I wouldn't go longer than 24 hours only because you've got fresh herbs in there and they will break down. Mm. So you want to eat this as quickly as you can, uh, as quickly as you can when you're serving. Great question. Very good question. All right, and thank you guys again for joining us. We are doing a smoothie and a salad. Absolutely. With similar ingredients. So next I'm just gonna add finally just a little salt, a little bit of pepper here. Voila. Oh, that's great. Look at this, look at this beauty. This I gotta looks see it. fantastic. Beautiful, mm -hmm. gorgeous. Yum, yum, yum. That could even be used as um, a marinade for chicken as well. Yep. So you can make extra for the actual grilled chicken that we're making. Absolutely. All right, so next up for our chicken. So, chicken breasts. These beautiful, beautiful chicken breasts. All right, there we go. Just gonna sit out here. So now with our chicken breast, notice there's the fat, these little yellow pieces here. That's what you wanna remove. So you can very easily, very carefully go through here and just cut off some of that extra excess skin and fat that's on here. Go. And um, just to answer the question, are fresh herbs uh, different in nutrients than dried? Off the top of my head, I don't know the nutritional breakdown of the dried um, herbs, but I would imagine that they are lower in nutrients because they've been dried out. Mm -hmm. So, but we can look that up after. All right, so we're going to butterfly this chicken breast. Now, again, you notice I had my I had my hand flat on it. I just went very, very carefully, very, very carefully through. There we go. Voila. Beautiful. All right, great. Whoa. And this is to top the salad. So you Correct. could really use any protein source that you want. Um, you can use turkey meatballs, chicken burgers, uh, turkey bacon, and cut up hard boiled eggs. Yep. Um, you can use grated cheese if you wanted to, low fat mozzarella, um, and turkey roll ups. So you could do whatever you want yeah, really you with it, this. Make it your own. Yeah. For sure. Especially right, if you start getting sick of chicken. Absolutely. But I never get sick of chicken. All right, right in our pan we go. And for those that um, have told me that they're not tolerating chicken after the surgery, I want to challenge you to have chicken again. But this time, taking small bites the size of a jelly bean or a dime, really chewing thoroughly like 20 to 30 times, and going slowly. Mm -hmm. That's how you should be eating all of your meals after surgery. Um, and it's a really great way to avoid just feeling that feeling that sick feeling and that stuck feeling. And then also don't forget about papaya enzymes. They're mm -hmm. really great. They break down your food for you um, and they're helpful. That's so such a good point. don't rule out all of these great protein sources that you really need after surgery just because maybe ate it a little too fast or took too big a bite. Absolutely, yeah, yeah it's a great point. I know that was something that I really struggled with uh, when I was first getting out of surgery mm -hmm. was really reminding myself not to chew quickly. Yeah. Because you yeah. really, like, you'll know. I mean, I, had, I was sleeved back in Septem uh, September of 2016, and I had the exact same thing where I, I just, I knew immediately when I just, I did not chew my food fully, and it just ended up being just, just I knew it, I felt it in my stomach. Right. So just, you know. And you get that reminder. Absolutely. And yeah. with, with, with tougher cuts of protein, you know, with stuff like this, a bit more body to it, like chicken, beef, pork, that's not flaky like a fish would be. Mm -hmm. It's not gonna break down as easily. So you really have to break it down yeah. and chew it and break all that protein down first before you try right. to Right, you gotta do the mechanical work. Right. And it, because because our diet is so limited after surgery, mm -hmm. you really don't want to rule out these really great sources of oh, protein. Oh, absolutely. So, um, you know, open up the mind a little bit, take that challenge, absolutely. and don't be afraid to actually go back and try it again. Absolutely. Yeah, you guys, know? we've got our spinach here. We've got some carrot. We've got our strawberries. We've got our fresh pineapple. We've got some fresh cucumber Very here as well. Very nice. And I just want to say hello to Amanda, Pamela, Lovdana, Julie, Jakia. All of our friends are here tonight. Yay. Thanks for joining us, guys. We're just in the middle of making our grilled chicken for Absolutely. the topper to our salad. Yeah. We made our smoothies. Yum, yum, yum. And um, as you can see, we are feeling tropical this evening as well. Oh, yes. Beautiful. We are both in vacation mode. Yes. And um, 
I definitely think this needs a little bit more, uh, this needs a little bit of Splenda and some extra ice. Yep. So you're gonna get the um, recipe for the, for the smoothie, but I would add extra ice and a thing of Splenda. Absolutely. That's my That's my recommendation. There you yeah. go, I like it. Yeah. Unless but we make it here first, we give a little taste test for so you guys. So you know. And make some recommendations. Yes. I like it. All right guys, so our chicken is cooking away here. So you'll notice how I kind of did this process, right? I made my vinaigrette first. You could do this ahead of time if you want. Then I got my chicken cooking. Mm -hmm. Now I've got a little time to interact with the people. This is my favorite part. Oh, yes. Part. Yes. You know, again, guys, if you have your questions, please feel free to ask. Remember, Janice said earlier in the show, if you weren't watching, uh, that she does have with the uh, uh, Bariatric Vantage Protein. Yes. That there is. There is a discount code. Yes. It's just GBMC, all caps. And I actually have another code if oh, you're interested. Um, Undry products are really good. They're basically, you know, hospital grade um, protein and you can get the powders or the shakes. And um, I'm not being paid by any of these people. I just get discount codes for you guys. Um, and the discount code for Undry is um, GBMC Bariatrics 10. GBMC Bariatrics 10. So Great if you're checking out, you can put in that discount code. So again, like we said earlier, when those tax refunds come back, put a little aside. Yes. I know that everyone's talking about how eating healthier is much more expensive, but guess what? You are paying for your nutrition, okay? You are paying a little bit extra for your nutrition and your protein. Mm -hmm. And um, you... I mean, you're going to save in the end because you're not eating as much, especially Absolutely. if you're eating really great sources of protein. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Great point. Great yeah. point. And you'll save yourself on medical bills later on. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is a yeah. good point. Yeah. Love it. <laughs> yes. So. All right. So now. So what's we've got next? Our, yep. So we've got our vinaigrette made here. Mm, this good. Yum. We've got our green goddess vinaigrette here. I'm going to add our spinach to it. That's we got our chicken cooking away. I'm going to add our spinach to it here. And we got um, a question, can you eat corned beef brisket? Um, if it's a very lean cut of brisket, I would say go for it. Um, if it's not, then you would have small servings every so often. So that's, there's like basic, uh, there's a basic rule across the board with very high fat meat. And that is, you can have it because it's so low in carb and it does have some protein in it, but not as your main source of protein all the time. So like a lot of people ask me about bacon and sausage, regular bacon and sausage. and I say every so often you can have some you know you don't have to abolish it but um, it shouldn't be your breakfast every single morning okay it's also not great for your arteries um, saturated fat does increase your cholesterol levels um, as shown in the current research mm -hmm. so all right guys so we went ahead and added our baby spinach or a pan for, to our uh, bowl first here it's given a nice quick toss around again you want it to be too saturated then we go ahead and add some of our baby some of our shredded carrot here. Wonderful. Strawberries, beautiful fresh strawberries. Add these guys in. So fresh who in the pineapple. audience does put fruit on their salad? Let us know. No, I do. <laughs> some fresh cucumber. I'm gonna add a little salt and pepper in the bowl as well. Don't be afraid to season your salads. And um, we got a question: Is uh, spinach lighter on the stomach? Um, as uh, arugula and they're both greens um they're both similar the arugula is a little bit more bitter yep um, arugula's got a bit more pepperiness as well yeah but i would say the way it digests is probably similar um just as long as you really chew it up thoroughly i agree yeah for sure all right I, what doing here. I think most of the green leafy vegetables that are light like that are going to be pretty easy on the stomach just as long as you're chewing them and by the way, if veggies aren't yet great on your stomach, maybe you're soon out and you can't tolerate, you know, certain veggies, cook them down. That's yeah. the best way to eat them because they're already breaking down for you in the pan and you're still getting the nutrition from them. Okay, and then um, can we use something other than spinach? Absolutely. Any any lettuce I am okay with. Yep. How about Mescaline that? Mescaline greens, romaine, yep. iceberg. Bib. Bib. Butter. Boston, yep. Butter lettuce. <laughs> yep. Um, Arugula. We can keep going, guys. Yeah, you let me know. Now, I do um, recommend against putting dried fruit. I see a bunch of people put cranberries on it. Um, it's not something that I typically recommend because you're just going to get a lot more concentrated sugar 
from the dried mm, fruits. Great point, yep. Um, and then also you can have lettuce and um, any raw vegetable. So something like this, you can have any time from six to eight weeks out of surgery. All right. And for anyone that's just joining us, we've already plated our salad. We yep. have our grilled chicken cooking. We did a little smoothie with similar ingredients, minus the chicken, of course, right? Of course. And some people on here said, I don't, I don't want to drink my spinach. You know, you don't have to use the spinach in the smoothie. That's fine. It's just an idea to bump up the nutrition. That's all. But um, you can always just use, you know, your fruit, right? Absolutely. Okay. And then um, rule of thumb with condiments in general, barbecue sauce, ketchup, um, honey mustard, all of those, those three that I just mentioned, um, are pretty much made of sugar. So there's a really, there's a couple of really good sugar-free lines. Um, G. Hughes is one of them. He makes a good um, barbecue sauce and honey mustard and ketchup, actually. And you can find that right on Amazon. Okay. And then um, salad dressings, you just want to do a low-fat salad dressing and make sure that it has less than five grams of sugar. And just regular old mustard, like plain Dijon or re regular yellow mustard, that can be, um, you can have that anytime because it's very minimal. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good question though, thank you. All right, and thank you to Nancy and Lynette and Michael and Andrea for joining us. Everybody's here, love Everyone's it. Everyone's here, the gang's all here, right? They are, exactly. Okay, and you know, don't hesitate. You don't have to use a pan and oil. You can always use your air fryer. You could use a George Foreman grill. Absolutely, You can yeah. use the oven. You could, in the oven, now we don't have an oven here um, to use, but in the oven you can bake tons of um, pieces of grilled mm -hmm. chicken for the whole week. Absolutely. So that's always a good thing. Absolutely. So either way. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure, guys. So yeah, guys, so I hope everybody's doing well. Uh, we have some really exciting things coming up in some future episodes. Uh, we're really, really super excited. Um, you know, this has been great. Uh, I was waiting for a chi uh, chicken to finish cooking here. I've, you may or may not have noticed, I pulled a little too early. I cut into it. I'm like, whoa, wait a minute. This isn't fully cooked. No big deal. Put it right back in your pan. So you do have to check. It, yeah, exactly. Really important to check now. You know, we don't want to. We don't want to do any uh, medium rare chicken. Yeah. By the way, if you ever meet anybody that does order medium rare chicken, please stop them. That <laughs> is, is not a thing. It is unsafe. It is and unsafe. It is I not good for you. I just want to make a little plug for um, this Thursday at six thirty. Yes. Um, in the Civil Eddy Center, you can come join us for our support group. Um, any anyone and everyone is welcome. But we're focusing on family, um, so if you want to bring your kids or your partners, um, it's a good way for them to learn about the surgery and ask any questions that they might have, or talk about any you know challenges that you might yeah. have within the family based off of um, the weight loss surgery. So you can be pre or post stop, and you can bring anyone that you want, which is great. And that is Absolutely. this Thursday at six thirty. So hopefully you guys can all come. All right. Yes, and I will be bringing some treats. Ooh. Doesn't love treats. Yes. One of our patients, Tova, brought us a bunch of treats. Oh, great. So I will be bringing um, some like low-carb snack foods. And I'm also going to bring um, some calcium citrate chews so you can oh, see looks, if you like those. This looks delicious. Oh, that looks great. Mm -hmm. Looks yum, nice and juicy, yum, which yum. I love. Oh, hey, TJ and Terry. Yum, Good to see yum, you guys. Yum. All right, guys. So we go ahead and get our chicken breast cooked. Uh, just so you know, we're going to do four ounces per portion. So we cooked about a pound worth of chicken. So we divvy it up by four. Yep, exactly. Um, and I'm just going to I'm going to put on my dietitian hat once again, and I'm going to remind everyone, no matter how far out you are, if you really do feel like you are getting hungry often, do try to completely eat your protein first before moving on to other things on the plate. So like, for instance, if you're looking at one of these gorgeous plates, you would eat the chicken first oh, and Jenna. then- Don't you, um, like it? Don't you know I blush? <laughs> you would eat the chicken first and then you would go on to the non-starchy veggies and then onto the fruit and stuff. So it's a really good way to get fuller for longer and to make sure that you're not too hungry throughout the day. Okay, and you will always meet your protein goals when you do do that. Mm -hmm. And then I say, if, if you can't do it all the time, do it like 90% of the time. 
Absolutely. Yep. Okay. And, and that's the thing too, especially when you're when you're uh, 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 closer out, you know, or, or you know, closer out from your surgery. Keep in mind that you know, like my goal was 90 grams a day, mm -hmm. right? I was super worried that for the first month, two months, I wasn't hitting that number, and that just just you know mess with my psyche and i was like what am i doing wrong what am i doing wrong and i you know went to dr bellow and he's just like it's okay like how yeah. much are you getting in 60 65 that's fine yeah just it, drink it a lot of water the water was really the main thing yeah the water is the main thing and it does take a little while because your stomach is still inflamed yeah. and healing you're not going to be able to get in absolutely the 70 to 100 grams of protein absolutely so, well, let's, let's bring yeah. jennifer back up and let's right. uh let's start eating here go cheese Almost forgot the Almost goat forgot. cheese, so but I, I'll never forget the cheese. Never. All right, we're gonna use some okay. fresh Jev here, a little goat cheese, my favorite. Okay, so what do you think? I love the smoothie, and I do not think that it needs any more. Oh, sweetener. you don't? Okay, no. so we have a second opinion. Yes. Here, come on in. We have a second opinion. We don't think that it needs any more sweetener or ice. I do think it needs more ice. Okay. But no more sweetener, I think it was perfect. Okay, beautiful. And I love the spinach, and the cinnamon was a, a big, um, I love Isn't that. Isn't that nice? Oh, right. good. Thank you. All right. A little goat cheese action there. <laughs> okay. Beautiful. Yum, yum, yum. So let me grab us some forks. Yes. You do that, I'm going to have a sip of this delicious smoothie. Mm -hmm. Very good. Okay. Mm, mm, mm. Here you go. Thank you. For yourself. Thank you. Oh, that looks delicious. And for yourself here, Jenna. Okay, I'll move that for you. <laughs> Thank you. And for me. Thank you very much. I'll give you that just in case. All right. Okay. Let's eat. So. Grab a fork. Why, thank this you. This is yours. All right. Okay. Let's do this. Mm -hmm. So I think I'm going to have the, um, mm, the protein oh first. Because <laughs> I don't want to be a hypocrite. Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Yum. Beautiful. Mm-hmm. Well, and this might be a nice thing to grill out too. You can put the you can put the pineapple on the grill too. Mm hmm mm -hmm. Mm. Should be delicious some grilled chicken. What do you think, Jennifer? It's light and delicious. It's I love it. Perfect Wonderful. for the spring. Perfect. Wonderful. Mm. Yeah, love it. And all summer. All summer, yes. <laughs> exactly. Okay, well, thank you guys so much for joining us. This was so much fun for me because these are mm -hmm. two of my favorite things to prepare during the week. Um, when I'm in a rush, you know, absolutely I need something high protein, healthy, quick, lower in carbs. These two are so super easy. Absolutely. And um, I just want to thank everyone for coming and um, asking your awesome questions. And reminder, Thursday support group if you want to come, 6:30. And I do want to give a sneak preview of what we're doing next time. Yes, I was waiting for this. Okay. I'm excited. So for our Mother's Day special, which is going to be in May next month, um, we are both having our very own mothers come on to the show. So excited. And my mom is one of the biggest fans of the show, so I'm really excited too. And we're going to have a great time. Um, and I think it's a nice way to just honor our parents and where we came from and, you know, kind of show a little bit about where we got our cooking and our nutrition Absolutely. curiosities it's from. It's our love of food from. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you so much, Jennifer, yes, for joining thank us. thank you again, Jennifer. All right, and thank you, WMAR2, yeah. and we will see you next yeah, time. thank you very much, everybody. Have a great night. Goodbye. <laughs>